Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is August 26, 2016. And here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, the truth about Hillary Clinton's alt-right speech. Oh, you mean dark conspiracy theories like a YouTube video being responsible for Benghazi? What difference at this point does it make? Then, pants up, don't loot. A city in Florida bans saggy pants on city property. And WikiLeaks is investigating the mysterious death of Seth Rich, who was the source behind the DNC leaks and the latest casualty of the alleged Clinton body count. WikiLeaks never sits on material. Uh, our whistleblowers go to significant efforts to get us material and often very significant risks. As a 27 year old, I works for the DNC, who was shot in the back, murdered uh, just two weeks ago uh, for un unknown reasons as he was walking down the street. All Washington. that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Hillary Clinton interrupted her coughing fits, seizures, and three-day naps to attack the alt-right. Clinton savaged Trump for weaving dark conspiracy theories. Oh, you mean dark conspiracy theories like a YouTube video being responsible for Benghazi? What difference at this point does it make? She then proceeded to weave her own gigantic dark conspiracy theory. Namely that Vladimir Putin controls InfoWars, Breitbart, and the entire alt-right. And the grand godfather of this global brand of extreme nationalism is Russian President Vladimir Putin. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny because I don't recall receiving my paycheck in the mail from the Kremlin. It's also what happens when you listen to the radio host Alex Jones. Right, so Trump is the conspiracy theorist for listening to Alex Jones, yet you just asserted that a former KGB officer under the communist government of the Soviet Union is now the leader of conservatives in America. What does that mean? Of course, Hillary failed to identify the real leader of the alt-right. <laughs> oh yeah, and according to another one of Hillary's dark conspiracy theories, Trump is responsible for bullying in schools. The Trump effect. Bullying and harassment are on the rise in our schools. Right, because it's not like Trump supporters have been viciously attacked and harassed by leftists, for the last six months solid. But wait, it gets even funnier. Hillary began reading out headlines written by Milo Yiannopoulos. Hello. Birth control makes women unattractive and crazy. Nobody wants to you. Would you rather your child had feminism or cancer? He is taking hate groups mainstream and helping a radical fringe take over. Oh, you mean like you and Obama have been doing for the last two years by mainstreaming Black Lives Matter, a group that has inspired cop killers and whose ideological inspiration is on the FBI's most wanted terrorist list. These are racist ideas, race baiting ideas, anti-Muslim, anti-immigrant, anti-women, all key tenants making up the emerging racist ideology known as the alt Right. So posting dank memes makes you an evil racist, but openly praising and describing as your mentor a man who founded a KKK chapter called Black People Mongrels and campaigned against the Civil Rights Act. My friend and mentor Robert Seabird. That's just fine. Hillary also said that the alt-right is anti-women. This from the so-called feminist who takes hundreds of millions of dollars from a country that treats women little better than cattle. Nigel Farage, who stoked anti-immigrant sentiments to win the referendum, to have Britain leave the European Union, campaign with Donald Trump in Mississippi. Yeah, the key word there, Hillary, is win. He won because the tactic of constantly calling him a racist failed, just like your speech. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. But seriously, if the alt-right are trolls, who inside Hillary's campaign thought it was a bright idea to do the one thing you're not supposed to do with trolls? Which is feed the trolls. The alt-right only succeeds if you respond. You just walked straight into a trap. It's a trap! The people running your campaign are complete <laughs> idiots who don't understand how the internet works. This has backfired more than any of us could ever dream of. Hundreds of thousands of new people 
are now coming to our websites, where we'll continue to educate them about your failing health, rampant corruption, and sneering, arrogant elitism. Thanks, Hillary. Racist, 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 racist. And that's a great video there from Paul Joseph Watson. Now in other Hillary news, we all know that she's gone well over 200 days without having a real press conference. She'll have photo ops. She'll allow people to come in and she'll take pictures with babies and you know, this is me shaking hands with the police chief or whatever it is that she's doing, but she never allows the press to ask her real questions at these events. And now it's gotten to the point where she's actually bribing the press with sweet chocolates because a press conference is like a box of chocolates. You never know what questions you're going to get. <laughs> Now's a good time for a question, right? Well, <laughs> I want you to offer it to all the press. They are so, yes. so yes. wonderful. We brought out all the plates. So cooperative, <laughs> so hardworking. They all deserve it. Why not? Why not? Second outright quiz. all Donald Trump and Jesus today? No, I don't love this, Dan. <laughs> And the Clinton news does not stop there. You guys probably heard all the hubbub earlier this week. The group that makes the EpiPens, they've pretty much gouged the prices uh, a great deal here. And now we see that the company is gouging prices up. EpiPens, they are a Clinton Foundation donor and partner. And Hillary did come out and criticize the company, calling its price hikes of the life-saving medical device outrageous. It's just the latest troubling example of a company taking advantage of its consumers, said Clinton. EpiPen injections, which help stop potentially fatal allergic reactions, cost $57 in 2007. Now they run for $609, according to CNBC. Now, with this, they said it's not all their fault. And to an extent, they are correct, because we do have a medical system that has a lot of problems, especially the uh, pharmacal, pharm pharmaceutical industry. So to that extent, I don't blame them wholly, but at the same time, it is their product. They set their own prices, regardless of what of other uh, regulations that are going on at the time. And it does remind me of all the people who, you know, they go to Canada or they go to Mexico to get their pharmaceutical drugs because they can't get it here at a reasonable price here in the States, even willing to take something of a lesser quality for the hope that it will work for them. So in that aspect i do understand that but still when you go from 57 dollars to 609 dollars there's a lot of uh, in between in there a lot of uh, gray area that like did you really have to raise it that high and of course i don't blame hillary for that specifically but this group is a donor and a partner so it does need to be addressed as far as their actions are concerned now it's just last month our crew was in cleveland talking about the national conventions and all the politics that were going on and one of the hot topics that was going on in Cleveland was whether or not people were going to be able to open carry their firearms. A lot of people said they were going to. Some people did, but it wasn't the big national spectacle some people were was expecting it to be. It was just pretty much a few people. And to my knowledge, nobody got arrested for open carrying their firearms. People got arrested for other things, but not for that. And now we see that a judge is striking down some of Cleveland's new gun control measures. Now, the Cleveland mayor, Frank Jackson, he was still counting this as a victory because uh, the city got to up uphold its controversial gun registry, but a common pleas judge knocked out Cleveland's firearms ordinances in four ways. First uh, was the definition of a automatic firearm, which included semi-autos capable of firing more than 31 rounds without replacing, uh, without reloading to be unconstitutional. And let's stop right there and talk about this for a second, because they're basically trying to change the definition of what an automatic firearm is. Because I, I was watching the, the BBC one time, and it was so funny to me. And I'm not sure if the reporter didn't know or he just thought people were dumb enough to believe what he was saying. Because he was talking about one of Cody Wilson's videos. We talked to Cody here. He, he does a lot of printable gun stuff. They showed a video of Cody you know, firing one of his firearms, and he kept pulling the trigger. And the guy's like, look at this fully automatic weapon. I'm like, bro, he's pulling the trigger. One bullet comes out, one bullet comes out, one bullet comes out. Automatic is you hold and multiple bullets come out. That was not what a fully automatic firearm is. So once again, they're attacking the definition of what a fully automatic firearm is. And they're saying if you can shoot more than 31 rounds without reloading, that makes it an automatic weapon. No, it does not make it an automatic weapon. They're trying to change the language to confuse people. The second held that no person could fire a gun within 500 feet of a park, playground, or recreation center owned by the city. Now, I understand why they have this in place. Of course, like if you have some place like a park, you have children there, you don't want them to get hurt. I understand the reasoning behind that. 
The flip side of that is if you have some female jogger who's out there by herself, some guy tries to drag her in the woods, is she supposed to say, okay, man, let's run 500 feet over here so I can shoot you with my little Derringer pistol? No, that doesn't work in real life, so they overturned that, and that was a good deal. And the third, Cleveland seizure and confiscation ordinance allowing police to collect weapons from those suspected of drinking or threatening a disturbance, violated state carry laws. That's good. And also, finally, the court held that an ordinance changing the penalty for defacing a firearm from what the state allows was unconstitutional. But it's not just in Cleveland where you have all these gun control measures. In California, they're battling what's become known as gun Mageddon. Uh, that's a horrible word, but that's what they're calling it. And this is an article out of Fox News. The laws, which take aim at the so-called assault weapons, enforce ammunition background checks. Now, let's dwell on this for a second. Ammunition background checks, this is what is known as backdoor gun control, because they understand they can't ban the weapons outright. They're trying to do it in many cases, but they understand that's going to be a big fight. So they'll say, okay, we'll try to ban magazine size or make you register to uh, get your ammunition. Now, you guys recall, you go back to all these videos of Feinstein or anybody else saying, there's no such thing as a gun registry. They want you to register your ammunition so they can know who has it, and they're going to put that into what? A registry. So the gun registry does exist, even though they like to act like it doesn't. And also, I believe it was the Daily Caller who brought the news a couple months ago how um, uh, one of the, uh, was it ATF, they were holding onto your gun uh, regulation or your gun uh, paperwork, even though they're not supposed to do that. They're ordered by law to get rid of that stuff, but they're holding onto it anyway. Also, and these things take effect on uh, January 1st, and also the possession of high capacity magazines. Now let's define what a high capacity magazine is. You go to Cabela's or you go to Academy or whatever your sporting goods store is and you buy an AK-47 or an AR-15. It likely comes in the box with a magazine that holds 30 rounds. If it comes with a 30 round magazine, that is a standard capacity magazine. What they're trying to do, once again, is confuse the language. They're saying that if it holds more bullets than we want it to have, it's a high capacity magazine. That's like saying if your scooter drives over, you know, X number of miles, it's a, a Formula One race car. Like, no, it's still a scooter. You can't just change the definition and call it what you want. And also any rifle with a detachable magazine will be defined as an automatic weapon, uh, similar to what we were talking about back in Cleveland, where they're saying that if you shoot more than 31 rounds, it's a fully automatic weapon or defined as an automatic weapon. And now they're saying this is an assault weapon. If you can shoot your weapon with a detachable magazine. It's completely ridiculous. These people are just trying to change the language, confuse people. And this is why you see those videos when we walk out in the street and we ask people to tell us what an assault weapon is or a fully automatic weapon is, and they can't tell us. It's because of things like this. These people have no idea what they're trying to ban. It's pretty obvious when you sit down and talk to these gun control guys, uh, even some of the politicians, you ask them, what specifically are you trying to do? And they can't even tell you like that famous clip. I want to say that lady's from Colorado. I'm just going off the top of my head here. I don't have it in my notes. But she was talking about uh, the Tashville magazine. She's like, we should just let people shoot these magazines because then they can't use them again. And we were like, well, you can reload a magazine. And this is the type of mentality that you're going up against with these gun control advocates. They have absolutely no idea in many cases what they're trying to do. Now, there are people who I do believe have the best of intentions. They just go about it in a different way than I personally would. Uh, like we talk about uh, open carrying or concealed carrying a firearm. You know, I want you to have the ability, not mandatory, but to have the ability to carry a firearm if you so deem it appropriate. Just like I want you to have the right to carry a pocket knife or pepper spray or any number of other things for you in that situation because the police cannot be there to save you all the time. Likewise, or I guess on the flip side of that, they say carry nothing in your purse, don't carry pepper spray, don't carry a knife, don't carry anything, and just hope that people will come to your rescue if something was to happen or the police will come and save you. And that just really doesn't register for me. And something else that doesn't register to me, uh, these self-driving cars. Now, in a way, I can understand they're being convenient if, let's say, you go out and you drink. You know, you want to have the car drive you home. For that, I can understand the practicality of it, but it's also very impractical, in my opinion, when you have so many videos of these things just going off the wall. We saw the video of the guy getting run over, which I shouldn't laugh, but I think that is such a funny video. This guy stands in front of the car and lets the car drive over him. Also, the story that's not as funny, or not funny at all, a guy was in a self-driving car. His car mis mistook a uh, trailer on the back of a truck as being a clear blue sky, and then they drove into the trailer and killed the guy. So there's issues like that with it. So pick your poison. I'm not a self-driving car fan, but I also don't think it's going to bring about the apocalypse, as this author uh, kind of jokingly says. It says, this is a glimpse of our future dystopian hellscape. 
<laughs> uh, they're joking about it. Uh, I think they're a fan of the self-driving car. But to each his own, I personally do not plan to get in one. And let's talk about the EPA now in their oil spill. And this is what I want to talk to people about, not just about carbon taxes, but just about pollution in general. They always want you to pay some type of fine or fee or carbon tax if it's a carbon issue for something somebody else is doing. And I talk to these guys on the street. I'm like, do you own a factory? They say no. I said, do you own a fleet of semi trucks? No. I'm like, why should you as an individual have to pay a carbon tax or pay for somebody else who's polluting, you know, whatever area? And that's what it makes me think when I look at this article, EPA held with withheld a key info about a post spill funding to the Gold King mine culprit. Basically, uh, somebody had a massive spill at a gold mine. It cost EPA withheld key info on post spill funding to Gold King mine culprit. Basically, they went out there, they had an incident and they paid them two point seven million dollars not long after the incident. Once again, your tax dollars going to clean up somebody else's mess. And I don't think you should have to be subject to that. And finally, I'm going to end on this talking about the burqa ban that's been overturned in France. Now, I personally was not a fan of the burqa ban. I'm not a fan of the burqa uh, as far as people being forced to wear it. If you're a woman and you choose to wear that, that's your business. But I don't like uh, people's fathers or their husbands or whatever saying that you have to cover up from head to toe to go outside. So they got rid of the burkini, as it's being affectionately called on the French beaches or overturned that ban on it. And once again, if you want to do that, that's your business. And in a other note, I just want people to know this isn't the first time they try to ban a article of clothing. They try to ban, or I guess they did ban, sagging in a Florida town. I understand sagging is not a religious thing, but just let you know this has happened before. And that's just a little bit of what's going on in the world today. Stay tuned after this break for more special reports. I guess this is my message, really, to Hillary Clinton. Because earlier today in Reno, Nevada, she sent me a message. And it was really a similar message to what you see in The Godfather, where they cut the racehorse's head off and stick it in the bed with a movie producer who won't give uh, the Frank Sinatra character the part he wants. Hillary Clinton, this monster of decades and decades of Mena, Arkansas, and the cocaine dealing of Waco fame. Hillary Clinton, who helped Bill Clinton pass minimum sentencing for blacks so they'd get four to five times more time in prison than whites for the same drug offense. Hillary Clinton, who sat at the knee of the Grand Dragon, the head of the Ku Klux Klan, Senator Byrd, said that he was her mentor, and Bill said it was okay he was in the Klan. He was just doing it to get elected. These are true sociopaths. With their global Clinton initiative, $69 billion that they basically give to their friends, tens of billions at the Clinton Foundation, paying for their planes and helicopters and homes. But, this, but she didn't take one penny. These are sick, sick, evil people that have engaged in so many crimes and that are the opposite of who they say they are. And you can see Bill Clinton and Hillary plagued by their illnesses, plagued by their evil. And as bad as Bill's been, the Secret Service has talked about her hitting him in the head with ashtrays and stuff. She was the president for two terms. She ran the show. Then Obama got in. She was the Secretary of State running that pay-for-play operation, kind of like the co-president over international affairs. And now she's looking for a fifth and sixth term, but this time she's really the big cheese. Hillary, there's still time to turn back. You are plagued. You are, you are so sad. You are obviously so eaten up by the inner demons that you have that you get up on television and lie about me and misrepresent what I have to say about Sandy Hook, just like you said, Donald Trump's in the KKK or supports the KKK. Made up bull. Just whole cloth. But you've got a corporate media committing Harry Carey, seppuku, suicide in front of everyone to try to put you, this near corpse creature, into the White House one more time. You really illustrate you're emblematic of a power structure completely out of control. But speaking to you directly, there is still time for you to turn back. There's still time for you to find your soul and not go for power one more time and stop trying to oppress the public and intimidate the media. Your own fundraising emails last week admit you want to shut down libertarian and patriot media because it has no right to exist in your final solution. Good luck with that. You'll only hoist yourself on your own petard. You'll only fall in the ditch you dug for us. But think about how you're illustrating everything we said you were. Think about how you are becoming everything that we ever said that you stood for, because we knew who you were. We knew what you wanted. We knew 
what your game plan was. As I sit out here in the 95 degree heat as night falls and I sweat, I, I guess I am figuratively in some type of fever swamp, but only because I'm focused on you and studying you and looking at you. Not because I want to look at you, but because you force your way into my life every day with the anti-constitutional legislation you push, with your anti-family agenda, with your globalist program of bankrupting this country to bring it to heel. Like you said, you bring black people to heel like a dog. You want to mount our head on a wall. You want to conquer us, Hillary. And your degeneration physically, again, is a symbol, a logo, a signet, a sigil of who you are and where you're going. There's still time to change the road you're on, but not long. You came out and you said that I said that Sandy Hook never happened and all the kids were actors. No. CNN interviewed people that said that, and I had debates with them and said that clearly there was some hijacking of a crisis. Clearly there was some weird stuff going on. Clearly Anderson Cooper wasn't there some when he said he was and was doing it from the studio on blue screen. But I never said that there were no kids killed there. I said we were investigating it. You misrepresented what we said. And on 9-11, I am totally vindicated and proud of the fact that when all these FBI agents and translators like Sebel Edmonds and others went public about 9-11, right after it happened, saying that they were ordered to stand down and that Saudi Arabia had carried out the attacks, I was there exposing that, and the Congressional report, not the 9-11 Commission, the Congressional report held first, said there was a cover-up. That's 28 pages. You translate that into me saying that, again, the government itself, you know, George Bush and firefighters blew it up. I, I, I didn't say that. In Oklahoma City, that was a false flag. We know the names of who did it in your administration, your first administration. We know what you did. We know how it happened. We've had the cops on, the witnesses, uh, Jane Graham, the, you know, the HUD people, all of it. So that's why you're so scared. You know that we've been studying you like the average man studies fantasy football. And that fundamentally upsets you. That fundamentally flips you out. That we're not here with teleprompters. We're not here on a set with, you know, a bunch of, uh, you know, air conditioners blowing on us. We're not here with teleprompters. I'm just right out here in my backyard as the sun sets or is it rising on American Liberty and just calling you out as a real person. But I'll tell you. I know the danger I'm in doing this. I'll never commit suicide. If something happens to me, look at Hillary Clinton, look at the globalist. But that said, whatever you do to me, I win because I'm an honorable person. I'm not a piece of trash like you. And I'm real. And I'm willing to come out and tell the truth and take action. People say, oh my God, you've hit the big time Hillary Clinton talked about. You give me a break. Hillary Clinton's average YouTubes on her own channel have like 5,000 views. Our average one has hundreds of thousands. We have YouTube videos with 20 million views. We reach billions just on YouTube. No one likes Obama. No one likes Hillary. Trump gets 30, 40, 50,000, you get 200. And that's your own crew members. The fact that you're so delusional though and thought that if you never said my name and just called me the Texan or Obama, that guy in Texas we all know in the press corps goes, oh God. Uh, the, you're so powerful that the guy in Texas has you crapping your diapers? You're so powerful that some guy standing out in 95 degree heat in the middle of Texas is talking to a camera has you scared? This is emblematic of how pathetic you are and how you're imploding. And I would just illustrate to the rest of the establishment, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, all the other mosquitoes that are out here biting us tonight, that you can go on for a long time. You can run on for a long time, but sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. You can hide your hand Work against the dark, against your fellow man. But just as sure as the sun comes up in the morning, you will fall. And I'm not the one wishing harm against you. I don't wish harm against fellow humans. I just want you out of our way. Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Hillary Clinton. So that's my message to you tonight. That's my message to you, as real as it gets. I'm not cool like you. I'm hot. I'm burning. I'm on fire. And I bring a lot of liberty, the animating contest. And I want you to understand that you've already failed. And the only way you can get any redemption is to turn back and find that little flicker of humanity that's still left in you. You can misrepresent what we say forever, but you're not doing it in a vacuum. You can try to shut down the free press. Can you believe they're openly calling for it? You can do all of these things. But the final equation, all it does is underline and highlight and emblazon 
and embolden and buoy and amplify everything we say and everything we stand for. The days of you being able to use the internet to cause infighting and run all those little scams are over. Every weapon you form against us is failing. Your quest to become gods and merge with machines show your folly. You were already made by God. You were already able to reproduce and create a merged copy of yourself with your lover. You were already part of a timeless experiment in this dimension. You were already divine. And you thought that if you listened to the devil, the devil could empower you. And now all you are is a sack of skin with a bunch of crooked bones like a pig putting an apple in its mouth and being ready for the furnace. There's still time to get off that platter, but you don't have long because the gates, the gates right out there are opening. Not long to get off that trail. You see, I don't fear those that can kill the flesh, but those that kill the soul. I'm Alex Jones for InfoWars.com. We'll be live tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central with a big global transmission. Hillary Clinton's so mighty, why does she attack Alex Jones? And one reason she does it is they spin it like they're discrediting Donald Trump with it. Oh, just like they discredited us months ago when we said Uma Abedin was connected to the Saudis. Now it's admitted. Or years ago when we talked about our foundation. Now it's all there. They know that we're not even that special. We're just willing to cover the real facts, the real issues that no one else is either aware of or doesn't have the courage to do. And then those talking points are real and are fact-based and are political coffin nails. I'm Margaret Hell reporting for InfoWars.com. I'm here in studio with Owen Schroyer. We're going to be talking about the Hillary Clinton body count, how bodies are stacking up around her, and specifically the death of Seth Rich, the DNC staffer that mysteriously died in a robbery, along with Sean Lucas. I know, Owen, you have others we're going to be discussing. Let's just jump right in. So Seth Rich's murder, the, the WikiLeaks founder, Julian Assange, talked to Fox anchor Megyn Kelly last night to which she asked him why he was so interested in the murder of Seth Rich. And he alluded to the fact that Seth Rich may have leaked information regarding the DNC in those emails, which may have gotten him killed. WikiLeaks, they also are offering a $20,000 reward for any information that leads to the conviction in the murder of Seth Rich, this 27-year-old staffer who died in Northwest Washington. You and I were talking off camera about this area. It's a very gentrified area. I lived in this exact area myself in Washington, D.C., um, for about a year. And when I heard this story about a robbery, they are quite common in that area, but this might be the first robbery on record where nothing was taken. Yeah, um, it's, it's interesting that you can call a robbery um, when nothing was taken, as you mm -hmm. said. So I don't know why they call it a robbery when nothing was stolen, but it's the first one of all time, I think, a robbery with nothing stolen. <laughs> so the man is, is not missing his wallet, he's not missing his keys, he's not missing anything that would indicate that he was actually involved in this incident. Also, there's a time lapse that's, that's happened where, you know, a certain amount of time was unaccounted for with him, which has a lot of questions for people. And that area is so heavily, um, there are so many security cameras everywhere. It's very difficult for me to believe that they don't have a suspect, usually within minutes, because of, of, of face rec recognition, they're gonna be able to target someone coming out of that. You know, his murder falls on the steps of uh, another case that I'd like to talk to you about. This attorney uh, in this DNC fraud case, he was found dead, his name is Sean Lucas. And uh, this attorney was a Bernie supporter. Uh, he filed papers at the DNC Services Corps against the chairperson, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, in their headquarters. He was later found dead, unresponsive in his home, a very young man. And uh, his girlfriend finds him on the bathroom floor when she returns home on August the 2nd. So this just happening, paramedics responded, no signs of life, a very young man. And yet again, the, the suspicion surrounding his death is just nobody's questioning it. It's it's amazing. Well, and isn't it amazing too? It's like this. I mean, there's a war going on right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got people. We've got lists here, and we're going to go over this. Forty, fifty names on it. Clinton body count lists. And now you've got DNC staffers dying. Mm -hmm. We had John Ash die recently. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a real war that's going on. They are. I mean, 
If you talk about Seth Rich, Assange comes out and basically says without saying, this was my source for the leak. Well, he wouldn't confirm or deny it because, right. you know, to do, to disclose a source like that, first of all, it does him no favors, but he basically said it without saying it, that he, he couldn't confirm it, but the possibility that Rich was in fact the source of the leaks, that's, that's what's at hand here. Basically. So, so it's basically like, if you're going to be leaking information, inside information from the Democratic Party to expose corruption, if you're going to try to bring awareness to how they stole the election from Bernie Sanders, if you're a Bernie Sanders supporter. Don't leave a bar alone at night, for sure. And and as you said, they're killing their own. Mm -hmm. Or if you're John Ash, I mean, apparently don't go to the weight room because you might have a rogue barbell fall on your neck right. and choke you to death. How, how bizarre are these deaths? You know, it started for me, and we've covered this a lot here in InfoWars, uh, but going back to the first you know, mentions of people dying when, when Clinton was in office. I know you've got the Vince Foster case up. You know, these suspicious deaths and these suspicious suicides of people that have too much information, they get too close. I know you're going to get into that, but it's it never stops. It just seems to never stop. Well, look, we've got this list here, and, and I've got multiple lists printed off from a bunch of different sources. A bunch of different people have done research into this. Mm -hmm. Each case, uh, you know, different case study here, trying to figure out what's going on. But I find this hilarious on Snopes.com. They even write a story uh, on the Clinton body bags. And immediately, the first thing they do in this report is say that it's false. Essentially, it's not true that the, the Clinton family or Bill and Hillary Clinton are offing people, essentially. And, but but here's, how they, here's how they lead the story. Decades old political rumor claims Bill Clinton quietly did away with several dozen people who possessed incriminating evidence about him. Uh, then they say it's false. And then they provide a list of almost 50 people long. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what? Mm -hmm. Can you find one other political candidate? Can you find one other former president? Can you find one other uh, person running for office where they have a list of 50 names of dead people that they've been associated with? I mean, if nothing else, this is just billows and billows of smoke coming here. And I think that we're starting to see the fire. I think that with Seth Rich, uh, with Lucas, with Ash, I mean, young, these are the fires now. You know, young, young man who had his life in front of him, who was a was a member of the DNC, was an activist for the DNC. You know, I was looking at his Facebook page. This guy, you know, he loved the country from what I read about him, you know, what he was posting online. And uh, regardless of his political affiliation and regardless of, of, the, of the issues surrounding him, the fact that his death is so mysterious, that is a problem here. The fact that we don't have a single security camera image of him getting robbed is a serious problem. And, uh, you know, I'm just not buying it. I know that, that little fanfare is going on about this. But in D.C., D.C. was the murder capital of the world. I'm sorry, of the U.S., and I think that it's been surpassed now. But, you know, these murders are very common. But in this specific area, incredibly rare. It just doesn't fly with me. Something, you know, it's something is bizarrely off with this. It looks like they'd be trying to cover it up just a little bit better than they are. Well, I mean, I don't know what else you can do. This is their cover story. It was a robbery. You got robbed. Yeah, it was a robbery, but nothing was stolen. So that's their cover story. They can't even cover this up anymore. That's what I'm saying. It's like this plumes of smoke are so thick and massive that they can't cover this up anymore. It's amazing. I mean, again, it's just ironic. A, a list of 50 names long. Let's say that 49 of those deaths, you All know. All suicides. Well, Joking. we've got a list. Well, no, hold on there. <laughs> let's, so let's go through yeah, that Let's one. go some of these. I mean, Ron Brown, another former DNC staffer, um, he died on a plane crash, mm -hmm. but he had a bullet wound in his head. Mm -hmm. So, so okay, let's logically think here. Well, you got to make sure this guy's dead. Then you're going to probably shoot him uh, just in case he doesn't survive the plane crash. Uh, it goes on. Jerry Parks, head of Clinton's Goober National, uh, National Security Team in Little Rock. He gets gunned down outside, um, outside of Little Rock. And he had files that he was keeping on the Clintons that got stolen mm -hmm. and disappeared mysteriously after he, he died. You mentioned suicides. Again, what is the Those coincidence? Those are my favorite. What are because, the odds that yeah. you have all of these suicides, Margaret? James Wilson, suicide. Bill Shelton, suicide. Uh, who else? Dan Lassiter. Or, I'm sorry. I shouldn't say that like that. Not my favorite, but those are the most suspicious because, you know, you've got people that are at the head of their game, that are in the political elite system. 
They have everything to live for, and yet they're offing themselves in mass. It's Some of these in the middle of an investigation. Mm -hmm. Some of these suicides happen in the middle of an investigation. Uh, Gandhi Boss, Susan Coleman, Danny Casolaro, there's one of the guys who was in the middle of an investigation when he committed suicide. John Parnell Walker, Stanley Huggins, Victor Thorne. These are all people that have been associated with the Clintons that have committed suicide. Again, maybe, okay, if this is coincidence, what are the odds? I mean, seriously, what are the odds of this? And, and show me one other uh, political family or political candidate or former president that you can even look and have these same uh, coincidences. And, and, and real quick too, let's remember, Hillary Clinton has been meeting with Google very often during this campaign. To so suppress it's, the searchability, bingo. exactly. Oh and, my goodness. And, and Paul Joseph Watson illustrated that in an article on Infowars.com, Google hides Clinton body count searches. And of course, just like Google is trying to hide the Clinton body count searches, this is what they're doing with the files. Vince Foster files disappear. Mm -hmm. All of these other investigators' files disappear after they commit suicide. This is, there's way too much smoke here. This is not a coincidence. And at the very least, you would hope that the mainstream media would at least turn up some of these rocks and do an investigation, mm -hmm. but we know that's not gonna happen. Well, we know that we have a judge's order to uh, begin the release of those 15,000 emails that remain on her server. She made a joke today about wiping the server. She meant, like what, with a washcloth? So we're gonna have to wait and see what those reveal next. Well, stay tuned for more reports. I'm Margaret Hell with Owen Schroyer for Infowars.com. Just days after daring to discuss Hillary Clinton's health, renowned celebrity physician Dr. Drew Pinsky's show was canceled. The HLN cable network announced that they would cancel Dr. Drew on call. They didn't really give many details other than that they said they had mutually agreed to air the final episode of his show September 22nd. But you'll recall just about eight days ago, America's most trusted physician made some startling revelations about Hillary's health. He stated that he was gravely concerned not just about her health, but her health care. He also said Clinton suffered from brain damage, among other concerning ailments. And believe it or not, that interview was subsequently deleted by KABC. Now, sure, it's possible that this was all just a coincidence, but shutting down and censoring dissent is what we can expect in Hillary's America. The problem is, so far, it's totally backfired. It's the Barbara Streisand effect. Take, for instance, the fact that, according to Google Trends, the top trending question regarding Democrat nominee Hillary Clinton over the past day is, what did Dr. Drew say about Hillary? So your average Americans out there who probably didn't even care that much about this election are pissed that their show got canceled, so now they're trying to figure out exactly what went down. Good job. Just like when Hillary Clinton bashed Alex Jones during her speech on the alt-right yesterday. Our site views went through the roof. The tried and true democratic tactic of calling everyone racist doesn't work anymore. But thanks for the new viewership. So what's important to understand is that this is a candidate who is openly running on taking away our rights. She's openly anti-Second Amendment, running on a gun-grabbing agenda. But even more glaringly, if you can believe it, is her hate for the First Amendment. Her campaign suggested in a recent fundraising email that the website Breitbart News has no right to exist and that Clinton would shut it down if elected. Her contempt for the press is further evident in the lack of a press conference for 265 days. This plays into the public's distrust of her. Even Washington Post says this sets a dangerous precedent for how accountable and transparent she might be as president. And for the press, her majesty the queen demon does tolerate, she ropes off into little press pens. You'll recall when the news first broke about Hillary's emails, no journalist bothered asking any questions of Clinton. It was actually TMZ, the Hollywood tabloid website, that had the guts to question Clinton about her emails in person. Now, of course, she ignored his questions, but that's all you need to know about Hillary and the obsequious, sycophantic media that should be holding her accountable. Most of them just acquiesce to her demands because they want to secure that White House access, White House press access that sites like Infowars and Breitbart and Drudge Report really don't care about. So when it comes to these grassroots alternative sites that can't be controlled, that refuse to acquiesce, well, we've got Hillary crapping in her adult diapers. Americans don't need to be educated on the alt-right. Nobody even knew what it was until you brought it up. Trump called it one of the most brazen attempts at distraction in the history of politics. 
What Americans do deserve to be educated on is what you, Hillary Clinton, as someone who has been in the public arena for decades, what are you going to do about the issues that Americans actually care about? Hillary Clinton is waging a war on two fronts. On the one hand, Hillary has launched a full-on dictatorial truth-denying attack on the section of the press that her handlers don't own. From the start, Donald Trump has built his campaign on prejudice and paranoia. He is taking hate groups mainstream and helping a radical fringe take over the Republican Party. While on the other hand, Hillary deals with her own checkered past aggressively rearing its ugly head on a daily basis. What were you trying to rally today for, sir? White lives matter. I mean, everyone's... Uh, oh, I got broken ribs. Sure. Go Who do you like for president, sir? Uh, Hillary Clinton. No wonder she suffers from decision fatigue. Nurturing lies this big is a full-time job. Paul Joseph Watson writes, Emails released by WikiLeaks show that Hillary Clinton looked into a drug used to treat sleepiness and Parkinson's disease after she apparently began suffering from decision fatigue back in 2011. Clinton sent an email to Cheryl D. Mills on August 19, 2011, featuring the text of an article entitled, Do You Suffer From Decision Fatigue? The article talks about how people in positions of power and influence can suffer from decision fatigue that causes them to be low on mental energy and prompts the sufferer to become reckless and act impulsively. Wow, that is spooky descriptive, wrote Hillary in response to the article. But it's the rest of America that appears to be suffering from Hillary's email scandal fatigue as yet another phase of the email scandal bubbles up to the surface. Judicial Watch wrote, A federal court has ordered the State Department to review newly found Clinton emails and turn over responsive records by September 13th and in two other Freedom of Information Act lawsuits. The State Department is scheduled to release additional emails from former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's non-state.gov email system beginning September 30th. In a court filing this week, the State Department admitted it had found Benghazi-related documents among the 14,900 Clinton emails and attachments uncovered by the FBI that Mrs. Clinton deleted and withheld from the State Department. And here we come to emails that blatantly show that the foundation took foreign donations when she was Secretary of State. There's no way on God's green earth that it, this would have been allowed under in any other era. This is going to be a disaster for politics in America. Thank, thank you. you. We'll let our guests respond. I think it's interesting that there's a bipartisan concern about Mrs. Clinton, and uh, we've seen that a lot, that there are, are uh, uh, people of the left who are concerned about good government, who have concerns about Mrs. Clinton's conduct. Mrs. Clinton wants to put everything in the context of the election, and I guess that's her right. Our view is that the law, rule of law has to apply whether or not someone's running for public office, and Mrs. Clinton wants to use the excuse of her running for the presidency to avoid answers and to mischaracterize uh, those of us seeking legitimate questions, uh, with legitimate questions as people out to get her. Hillary Clinton tried to run uh, on her ha having judgment and experience in the State Department. Uh, later on, uh, those campaigns, too late in the process in my view, started picking up uh, that the experience was mostly a bad experience. She was the leading architect, uh, the leading political force driving uh, to destroy uh, the Libyan state. Mm -hmm. All of the newly released emails will serve as a grand finale of Hillary's criminal mishandling of the State Department, an election that is shaping up to be historic in its bold display of a full-blown criminal waging a transparent psyop on the exponentially awakening American public. John Bound for Infowars.com. <laughs> Well, that's it for our show tonight. We do encourage you to go to prisonplanet.tv and get yourself a free trial. You can see the nightly news, the special reports, the rants. You can see that dark-hearted Alex Jones who, you know, just hates everything that's Hillary Clinton. That woman is so goofy. I'm, I'm just going to rant on this for one second because you have a woman in Hillary Clinton who is a habitual liar. She goes overseas to, where was she at, Bosnia? 
with Cheryl Atkinson, and she's saying, oh, I was out there, I was dodging sniper fire, and, and they're coming after me and all this stuff. And then Cheryl Atkinson, this was back in 2008 when she was running against Obama. So people know this, this footage is out there. They just choose to ignore it now in this election. Uh, but Cheryl Atkinson said, no, I was there with you that day. There was no sniper fire. They show the video. Hillary gets off the plane and she walks up. She's shaking hands and kissing babies. She signed autographs for little girls. But according to her, she was dodging sniper fire. Uh, of course, uh, 3 a.m. came in Benghazi. She couldn't be bothered to pick up the phone, even though Ambassador Stevens had been sending her cables for months. Uh, Bill and his uh, rape allegations, calling them Bill's bimbos. But hey, it, it, if you talk about that, you're just part of, part of the alt-right extremists. But this is what I noticed earlier today, and, and I quantified this into a coherent sentence. If liberals criticize or bash conservatives, that's called news coverage. But if conservatives bash liberals, that's called an alt-right conspiracy. I'm Jakari Jackson for the InfoWars Nightly News, and we will see you again next week.